Hello, I'm Sanjeev. I'm the senior partner manager at AWS. I have the pleasure here to have Robson with me. He's a chief marketing officer at OutSystems. Robson, thank okay. you for being with us. Thanks, Sanjeev. It's fun to be here. Actually, it's, after so much time on Zoom, to actually see a, a human is very nice. <laughs> Absolutely, it's a pleasure. So, I believe you've been with OutSystems for the last couple of years. Yes. Do you want to tell more about OutSystems? Yeah, OutSystems is a great story. I'm a little more than two years in. Spent a lot of that time in my home office, like many people who are uh, who are watching this today. Uh, OutSystems is a low-code development platform, and and our belief really is that more companies should be uh, software in innovators, and really every company in the world should be able to compete with innovation. And so, our platform is really designed to make the whole process of designing, building, and running production software in big scaled systems very easy. Uh, and uh, very accessible to lots of different kinds of companies. So we think of it as low-code, high-performance. Right. And I see that, actually, uh, especially with the pandemic, you know, a lot of the companies have these challenges on the, you know, productivity, on yeah. the, you know, the, the workforce, so they start there. So OutSystems really, you know, typically the clients will buy out systems to improve their productivity and still create ap applications rapidly. Yes, really, every company in the world has got this big backlog of things that they wish they could make. You know, and they look at the at the digital leaders and see all the great things they're doing, and they want to be able to compete. And so that's where you you buy a platform uh, from us that allows you to put some tools in the hands of your development teams that that makes them much more productive almost instantly. And our customers are using it for their uh, digital customer experiences, the apps and the um, and the web portals that their customers log into. Right. They're using it for the things their employees use on a day-to-day -day basis. And they're yeah. really reinventing a lot of the core processes of their business. So they've got great software that allows them to take advantage of, of all of the new devices and services that are available to really have a digital transformation that's working, not that, that not just being talked about. Yeah. yeah, and it's an incredibly easy to use platform, actually, a, a, a funny story. My 10-year-old wanted to you know, build a mobile application, and I was like, do you want to try out systems? He was actually able to build an application That's using out systems. So That's I was great. like, okay, the platform is, is not only super powerful for enterprises, it can, it can teach young kids to how to code. That's amazing, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, so why, why partner with AWS? So AWS has, uh, a, there's a bunch of amazing things about AWS. From our perspective, it's the most comprehensive cloud service base. You know, the, the things that are available here are everything from the basic services you need to, to run a platform all the way through to the most advanced things to do document recognition or uh, AR and VR, all those really cool things you can, that you can build. Yeah. And so it has an incredible service base. Uh, because of that, it's the platform that we've built OutSystems on. So when you, right. you, you see partner people around here walking around with uh, uh, OutSystems powered by AWS, that's yeah. we're very proud of the fact that our platform runs here and uh, we really get a lot of advantage out of that. The biggest reason though, I think on top of those two things is the degree of customer trust and customer respect though that AWS has. And that's really, the, I think the roots of the evolution of this partnership is we looked at, at uh, AWS and said, hey, this is somebody we really think that our customers are aligned with from a values perspective, from a service perspective, and, and so that trust and all of the all of what comes with have a great brand like this was, was yeah, a huge absolutely. motivator for us to do oh, that. Thank partnership. you for your trust. I think um, so I joined OutSystems partnership. So I started managing the partnership about 18 months back. Yes, yeah. And I remember when I joined, I mean of course the technology is built on AWS, but we were not doing a lot of partnership activities together. Yes. And then we went on a journey to create uh, our first ever strategic collaboration agreement, and it's had been an incredible journey yes. since, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, do you want to talk about like uh, how did you get convinced about a strategic collaboration agreement? Why again, you know, uh, partner with AWS? Yeah. So the roots of, of it come out of obviously our, our investment in the platform. We've been on uh, AWS since two thousand seven. It's right. a historic relationship. Yeah, and uh, and that's where it started. As we developed the strategic collaboration platform, we were really looking at a couple things. It was product innovation. Can we set up a product calendar together and a, and a, a focus that's going to allow us to take our, our product to the next level? Yeah. But then also, can we set some uh, joint market development goals that, uh, that will allow us to take the business to the next level? And so that's, those are the, the, the significant components of our, of our collaboration agreement. And, you know, I think as we've we've gone through, gone through a bunch in the last eighteen months. Absolutely. There's been a couple of chapters to it. Yeah. Yeah. With the exactly. Way. I think I think at the time we created that uh, agreement, I remember I was like, you know, we have absolutely no COSEL, no GTM till that time, 
and the four-year agreement just looked massive. Yes, uh, and we, <laughs> the numbers were intimidating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we started working on it, and uh, I think I think the key th thing in the first like six months was really on trust. Yeah, uh, you know, by building both the teams together. Do you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this concept of you. At Amazon, you guys talk about earn, earn trust, and, uh, um, and I, I think it really fits with uh, how we think about the world, but it really, the, that first six months was about how do we start sharing uh, leads, how do we start sharing deals, how do we collaborate in the field, yeah. how do we do run our first marketing programs and, and try to develop some new business together. And the, um, the evidence was very solid. There was you know, a lot going on, but it was, we were burdened by a lot of manual work. Yeah. You know, that, the, just the sharing of, of information, sharing of leads, getting yeah. salespeople together, all of that stuff was was challenging. And so, I mean, I think it was maybe a, a year ago where we where we were looking at this, saying the roots of this partnership are very strong. Yeah. What do we do next? Yeah, and I remember. I think, I think uh, round about actually this time last year, the fatigue started to set in. Yes. So the first three <laughs> months were super exciting. Yeah, and after that was like. Uh, do I really want to, you know, enter all those opportunities manually? And and that's when we said, look, let's pick up the pace, mm. right? So yes. it's going well. Uh, the first three months have been really good in terms of building the teams, building the trust, collaboration. But then, can we go any faster? And that's when you know I talked about ACR and yeah. integration. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, yes, yeah. Which you know we've, we've talked about this. This is a scary concept to, to do a direct CRM integration yep. with uh, with a big partner. And you know, this, obviously, there's things you you you, you worry about not uh, having two separate companies, but also a company that has potentially uh, conflicted interests through other product lines. And so we really were had to work through a lot to to make that decision to do yeah. the the CRM integration and to go straight to ACE. Yeah. Uh, but that was where things took off. Like that really was the was the moment where where the numbers changed and it became much more scalable because we yeah. were it was untenable for us to be doing so much re manual shifting around Absolutely. of information. Absolutely. I think I remember uh, the CRM integration was uh, around about eight weeks, which I heard the feedback was one of the fastest ever. So I think you used your own platform. We used our own platform for it. Yes, yeah, <laughs> so, it, that, so you know, it's great proof of the fact that, that it does make developers a lot more productive. We were able to go through that integration process very quickly, yeah. do a bunch of validation to make sure it actually worked the way we wanted it to, go over some issues that typically exist between two systems where one wants some data that the other doesn't have and yeah. finding ways to do the data mapping. Yeah. All of that stuff was, was you know, pretty easy to do. And so yeah. eight weeks later, all of a sudden deals are flowing. Yeah. And, um, uh, that you know that was a that was just a massive moment of change, yeah. and I think that's. Yeah, uh, and I remember. I think uh, so when we launched. I mean, we were very careful in starting with a certain sales stage of the opportunity because yes. of our data quality yeah. as well. When you enter the opportunity, you know there is obviously a team sitting on the AWS side doing the validation, what mm -hmm. we call as the ACE validation, and our biggest risk at the time is you know we just bombard the system with let's say hundreds of opportunities yes. and if they you know are not accepted they fail the validation yeah. and it'll call a you know very high number of reject rates the the whole purpose of the manual uh, you know converting from manual to automated yeah. would have been just lost because none yeah. of those opportunities are getting yeah. uh, accepted mm -hmm. so to me i think the the quality of integration using the out systems platform to start with but also focusing on the data quality yeah. i think that really helped and you know Fast forward four months. I think by October, twenty twenty one, we uh, exceeded a thousand opportunities. Yeah, you know, yeah. imagine like nothing <laughs> a year back, and from yeah. nothing to a thousand opportunities. Uh, incredible, yeah. incredible success. Yeah, it happened very fast. And that um, that focus for us uh, has been, as you're saying, on later stage. So we, after fifty percent in our our uh, Salesforce parlance, yeah. uh, so they they are more qualified kind of a uh, kind of prospects. And that's really we wanted to make sure we were we were uh, engaging not just in great data quality um, and, and good information for for AWS teams to work from, but also we've got a customer we're having a real strategic conversation with. Absolutely. And, and that's uh, you know I think as as we go forward, we want to do more and more early business planning with yeah. with our, our partners at AWS and in every sales team. And that's yeah. a that's a huge key learning of that of that first cycle. Is we you know once we got to a thousand deals, we could see the amount of opportunity across both sides was was you know was yeah. tremendous and yeah. and the customer need was real. Yeah, and we are super excited about that as well. I mean, we would love to when our scale actually from a global standpoint does look at partners like OutSystems yeah. who are leaned in. Who are able to share, you know, and grow rapidly, and mm -hmm. then we double down on those, you know, kind of 
we use the term flywheel. So yes. this is like the first wave of yep. the flywheel. We'll just want to, you know, uh, increase yeah. the flywheel effect. And, and and we have freed up capacity, right? So oh, yeah. the, the time that our systems alliance team and AWS partner managers would have spent to just work on the admin is no longer required because oh, yeah. they're automatically shared. It could be much more strategic. And so that's, I think, one of the great things that's happening is that between the team of, of partner success managers and uh, ISV success managers that we work with, uh, and and our uh, our partner team is very actively working on identifying opportunities and 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 really doing that that uh, frontline kind of stuff rather than being in the back office. Yep. And that's and your point about the flywheel and and your investment, I think, has been great. I think all of this success has led to really an overinvestment from AWS, which we thank you for, yes. in sure. uh, in co-op. I think we were uh, in uh, in uh, market development funds. I think we were slated for you know something like a, a million euros, and it's dollars. Uh, yeah, dollars. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that's, yeah. Uh, um, and it has been north of that by a significant amount, and that's allowed us to run a lot, a very aggressive uh, uh, amount of programs. And so we've had more than forty different marketing campaigns around the world that have. Yeah. Yielded us already, I think, uh, twenty-one or twenty-two thousand leads. Right. Uh, hundreds of qualified opportunities coming out of that flow. That's been great. Uh, we've had the chance to, through a lot of the events, were virtual up until reinvent, but to invest in the AWS programs. Yeah. We're super excited about the return of summits this year. I think this is going to be a big, big part absolutely. of our year. But yeah, um, in person. Yes, in person. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so there's the, all that marketing programming has been great. I think from a strategic perspective. Uh, the the closeness this developed has helped on the product side because we're getting really f uh, high quality attention from the product teams. Yeah. But also, it's helped alleviate some of the maybe competitive concerns. Like Honeycode is a a product that is that's ideally suited for work group kind of apps uh, and citizen development. And we found a very cooperative way to to, to work together where the Honeycode team has been great at at times identifying where their product doesn't fit and maybe ours does. And so we've exactly. had, we have a number of, of instances where you've called me and said, hey, this, this, te this team thought they wanted Honeycode. Honeycode's referred this to you. Yeah. So exactly. it has helped us develop a more strategic kind of a dialogue. Yeah, yeah. and I think what this pipeline does is overall in terms of the ranking of out systems and you know, uh, visibility you know, through leads and you know, wins mm -hmm. that we have, we are able to provide even better support, you know, which is now industry line. So this year, we're looking to really double down, you know, because of the investments that were done last year, both in terms of, you know, people, money, also the yeah. integration and automation. So our goals are even bigger and better this year. So thank you for your trust. <laughs> yes. I think we are yeah. looking for a fabulous 2022. Yeah. So Robson, as part of the strategic collaboration agreement, we talked about uh, product innovation and product modernization as well. And I believe yeah. uh, you're coming up with a new product called Out Systems Neo. You want to talk more about that? Yeah, so, so we're still referring to it by that code name, Project Neo. We, we started uh, really sharing more details about this last fall. Uh, and we're slated uh, pretty soon to see our first customers go into production. And really, a, a big part of our ability to do this so quickly has been the investment in engineering resources and, and the product attention that we've gotten right. from AWS. Uh, our, our thought process with this was that we see the cloud and cloud native development really unlocking a lot of incredible things for customers. You know, and we, we've got all kinds of customers uh, who have big consumer uh, dynamic kind of user bases and they need a real cloud native application, right. you know, something that can scale up dynamically, uh, something that can have resiliency across, across geographies. So yeah. all of the great properties of what's in the AWS cloud are super relevant, but they're also super hard for some customers to get to get really the access and to and to put to work. And so with Neo, we've really tried to take the best cloud engineering department you could ever build and the platform that they would put together and put that in the box. So you've got access to all of that dynamic scale and all of the the, the reliability and security and everything that would go into an, a, a perfect AWS uh, offering, and easily make that accessible to build apps on top of. That's exciting. I think super, super proud to be like part of that success of the joint story. So not only have we worked well on the GTM and CoCell, but also on the product innovation. Um, the, yeah, I mean, this is a huge part of, of, the, of why, why this partnership is so important to us. You know, the, all the go-to-market and those things are, are amazing, but we're really about customers and we're a product company yeah. like you guys. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's so your willingness to, and, and ability to help us be better at that is a, is a, is a huge asset. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Absolutely.